If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org. Lakeland Public Television presents Common Ground, brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. I'm Erica Hagberg. I create embroidery paintings using embroidery floss and glass beads. Well, I'm a fifth generation artist I'm from a long line of artists. Uh, great grandfather was a sign painter, grandmother was a fine artist. My dad did drawings and carved decoys. Uh, my mother's a home designer. <laughs> I and my children have been carrying on after me, so we a lot of times collaborate and work together on some pieces. So I pretty much paint with thread and paint with beads. So I lay everything out in palettes of color that I'm going to use for the project that I'm working on. So all my beads are laid out so I can get the highlights and shadows and depth and color. So every project has a different palette I have to rearrange to start out with. And I do work sometimes with size 11 size beads all the way down to micro 20 beads which are very tiny and the needle is no heavier than a hair. It does take an hour per square inch to work on each project. I've been trying to take the women's arts of embroidery and beadwork and try and take it away from craft and move it towards fine art. More like what's in the UK and New Zealand where embroidery and beadwork are more of a fine art. So I've been trying to shy away from landscapes, birds, flowers, which is considered craft, and do more of the human form, which is more considered fine art. So I do portraits, I do individuals, I do nudes. I try and create three dimensions. I have the framework, which are usually recycled picture frames. I have the fabric, which a lot of times are recycled fabrics, and then the embroidery and beads, and then I'll incorporate acrylic paint, fabrics, clothes, ties, glasses, everything that I can find that I can stitch onto the canvas to build a portrait from. I was able to find some old stitch work that were patterns from 1932. And they were simple, and they were cats. <laughs> but now the artists are really working towards new design, different things trying to hit the fine art market. And I enjoy adding elements of acrylic paint into my pieces. It just gives it a little more dimension and the painterly look. <laughs> I'm going to be creating a small 8x10 piece. I'm going to do a portrait of a young lady and her eyes are hand painted in greens and yellows. The fabric that I found that is repurposed is in green hues and so she's going to be dark skinned, caramel skinned. I will bead cornrows as her hair. So those will be in blacks and blues and greens also. I'm going to be working with the caramels and chocolates that I haven't gotten to play with yet. So it'll all have this warm dark feel as I go on.
So this is my palette of colors that I will be working with. And this is the palette for her lips. First of a hundred thousand stitches? <laughs> yes, and many, many hours. <laughs> uh. So I just use a tapestry stitch and then try and blend my colors. Of course, these are the hard ones that are in the corner of the canvas. The funnest part is after I get all the highlights and the shadows done, then I'm doing all the core lights, then it goes fast. And this is always the slowest part. <laughs> I think it's so cool to watch the thread, like... Go in and disappear? Yeah, go in and disappear. And okay. become a brush stroke. And become a brush stroke, yeah. And then when I get done doing the, the f human form that I do, I try and give them each a name. It gives it its own personality, like Michael and the Rose, or Undine, which means water nymph, or um, there's one called Erica <laughs> that I have. Not the same spelling, but it still says Erica. And it's better to do this in daylight than in the evening hours. <laughs> then you can't see it anymore. <laughs> so doing projects like this gives you lots of time to think. And how many times I have poked myself. And it's interesting working on the human buttocks and tummy because all of those stitches are in curves. So every stitch is like a brush stroke because if I was to do it like the um, silk embroiderers from uh, China, they do everything in short stitches. So if you get really close to their images, they look like werewolves. I mean, if you walk back away, they look like photographs. But if you get up close, they look choppy and, and like werewolves. But I, on the other hand, try and do each stitch like a paintbrush so that even if you get close, you can see the direction that the threads go. Even with the ear, I try and map out the direction from the ear lobe, even the crescent on the back of the ear so that it has dimension all on its own. I always find the choppier, the better. How so? To make the stitches choppy and leaving lots of indentations and long and short stitches, then when I go to the next color, then it blends like you're painting so that you have the blending going on. 
Okay, I'm going to be changing my threads using the highlight thread that I'm going to use. So what I end up doing is taking my pencils, in this case a uh, makeup pencil because it's softer, and I drew out where I'm putting all my highlights on my piece. So I finished all my core shadows, the darkest thread, and now I'm going to go to the lightest thread so then I can fill in all the rest in between. I kind of know where I want to put my highlights and shadows. And the biggest hazard of stitching is knots that come out of nowhere. <laughs> Last four stitches and she's a done piece. That's it. If you enjoy watching Common Ground online, please consider making a tax-deductible donation at lptv.org.